Okay, so this is the fourth time I'm recording this video, and I really, really hope it works this time. Okay, so in this video, we're going to learn how to, first of all, make a template that you're going to use for all of your Java projects, hopefully. And then also, I'm going to try and teach you about data types. Now, there's a lot in it, so... I'm gonna might be rushing a little bit through it. I just want to try and get it all done because, as I said, I only have 15 minutes on YouTube. Okay. So, oh, and yeah, I've also zoomed in the mouse, so hopefully people can read these better now. So anyway, the first thing we need to do then is to create our template file. So, like I mentioned in the last video, organization is really important, and what I want, like I advise you to make a Java folder. So navigate to your Java folder and you should have JLabs and reusable files now in reusable files we're going to create a template you should already have the input file that you downloaded in the first video and then template now to create this all you're going to do is open jcreator I'm just going to open it through here open your jcreator go to file new and file and just call it template and we're going to put the following into it so what we want to do first is create a header file so in this header file you're just going to put things like your name the date the jlab the purpose so on so the first thing you're going to learn in java is two backslashes or two forward slashes sorry so two forward slashes indicates a comment in java and in a comment you can write whatever you like and the compiler will totally ignore it. It doesn't matter what you put in. The compiler will ignore it. This is used for, say, if you're working in a team of Java coders. You need to comment your code so they know what you're doing in each part. If the code's a little bit messy or maybe a little bit hard to understand, you need to comment it so other people can understand what you're doing in case they ever need to fix it. Okay? So in the headers, we're just going to put some basic information like your name... Aaron Nolan, the date, which happens, oh no, just type in a big date, and then whenever you come to something that you're actually going to do, just remove it and put in the actual date. Okay? Next, we're just going to put JLab, and leave that blank, and what we can do is, when we're working on JLab, we can then add that in. So, if it's JLab 0, JLab 1, JLab 2, we can change it to suit. And finally, the last part is purpose and in this line is where you'll actually put what the purpose of the Java program is what it does again when we get around to actually writing a Java program we'll put that in there but for now like I said in this one I don't have time to explain everything and write a Java program so I'm just going to do some some basic explaining in this video okay so right it's time to actually start a bit of code okay so for the template we're gonna have the sa we're gonna have the basic things, right? First of all is the class. Okay? Now the class is pretty much the header of the whole file. It's it's the name of your file. As as we get further into Java, I'll explain more. You you get more into classes as you come down to methods. But we won't worry about that. That's a good bit down the line. So at the moment just think of it as the name of your file. And it's always good practice to have the class name and the name of your file the exact same. So again, for class, we're just going to put JLab because everything I do in these videos will be will be called JLab and then a number. So JLab and leave the rest blank. We can fill that in. Now in Java, certain things like classes, functions, if statements, they're always enclosed in curly braces. Okay. Now, a golden thing to remember is when you open a curly brace, you have to close it. If you don't close it, you're going to get errors popping up. Now, luckily, in this IDE J Creator, it actually closes. It actually makes a closing brace when you open a brace, which is a nice feature of the program. So just remember, when you open one, you have to close it. Okay. Again, you learn what you need braces for as we get further along down the line. Next is the method. Okay. Public static void main string brackets args. Okay. That's the whole main method. Now again, you don't need to 
know too much of this at the moment, so don't worry. But may, generally, public static, it just means it can be used by anything in this file. And if you put it in with another file, you can use it. Again, I'll explain that later. Void means it just it doesn't return a certain value. Again, as we get to methods, I'll explain that more in detail. You don't need to know it now. So main is the name of the function. You always the ver the main is the main body of the actual code where it it initializes. So you always have to have main. Now one thing I will point out is Java is a case sensitive language. That means main with a small m is not the same as main with a capital M. So make sure it's a small m for main. And then string args, again, don't worry about this. As we come to methods, you'll learn more. So this also takes curly braces. Again, open and close. And that's it then. Code goes here. And that's it. That's where your main code goes into. And that's the whole template file. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it does save you a little bit of writing. It's just a quick way. You can copy and paste that and get in straight away. Okay, so in in this template now, I'm just going to save that, and I'm going to show you some basic basic things you need to know about Java. Well, not even Java, about coding in general. The very first thing I want to mention is data types. Okay, there are four uh, main data types. That's int, float, double and car okay these all hold certain datas okay int holds whole numbers whole numbers and can be positive or negative okay so the, the best way I can describe this is just data type you use data types in conjunction with variables and these are just portions of memory that you use to, to save things into so if you want to save, if you want to use the number 1 in your program, you must declare it as an int, because it's a number, it's a whole number, and it's positive. Okay, the next one is float. Float is a real number, real slash decimal number, okay, so it can be 1.1, 1 .1, it can be one point. Oh, sorry, 1.2, you know, etc. So that's that's what, it, and it can it can go up to eight digits after the decimal point. So it can be 1.1234567 eight. As far as far as I'm aware, I think it's eight digits. It goes up to okay, and again, positive or negative. It can be either or. Now double is the exact same as float, except it's bigger. Okay, so same as float, but 16 digits past the decimal. Okay, so an example of this would be 1.1234567890123456. Okay, it can go that many times above the decimal. So that's an important thing to remember. If you don't know how many decimal places, you're 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 gonna need G generally just make it a double. Double is the handier one to use. It takes up a little bit more memory, but I mean it's it's tiny, so it really doesn't matter. And finally, the last one we have is car. Okay, so this stores characters. Now a character is literally any th any key you can press on a keyboard. So that's a character. 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 All of these are characters, okay? But it's only one. It can only store one. You can't have two like that. It can only be one. Okay. Now that's the main data types. You also have some. You also have boolean, where it can only evaluate as true or false. But again, you won't need this for a while, so we won't talk too much about it. But boolean, it can only be true or false. And then string. Okay, so a string is a sentence. So a string, it's opened by inverted commas. So, hi, this is a string. Okay, 
Again, this is a this is a sort of, this is a complicated data type in Java, so we won't worry about it too much for now. But that's your main data types now in Java. So just remember that. The last thing I want to go over in this tutorial is initializing variables, okay? So to initialize a variable, let's say we use int int number 1. Now that's initialized, okay? One thing some important things to remember, right? This part here is known as the variable name. Now the variable name should be short, but it should be descriptive. You should know like single character variable names are bad because you don't know what they're going to be for. Okay? So you you generally you should use something like that. Secondly, no two variable names can be the same. They have to be different, okay? So if we were going to make another one, you have to have int number 2, okay? If you have the same variable name, you will come up with errors. The problem is if you have two variable names the same and you try to use it in code, the compiler doesn't know which one you want to use, so therefore you get an error. So make sure you never have two the same. Now again, this is case sensitive, so there is a difference between number 1 and number sorry one and the same num number one they're all different variables but just you know try and keep them different and one thing you have to remember is the semicolons these little things right here they are used to close a lot of uh, I don't know statements I suppose you'd call them a lot of different lines of code you have to close them or end them with a semicolon. You'll notice up here the class isn't closed by a semicolon. Neither is the function. But as as we go on, you'll learn what needs a semicolon and what doesn't. But again, when you're initializing, it does. Now, finally, we have to assign them values. Okay. So one equals is used for assigning. Just remember that if you want to assign something, one equals. You'll learn more about equals later, but 1 equals is assigning, so number 1 is equal to 10. There you go, you've just told the compiler now, number 1 is equal to 10. Okay, now there's also other ways you can do it. Let's say for the second variable, you can call it like that, int number 1, and then, oh, sorry, number 1 is equal to 15. And there, you've initialized that. And you it doesn't have to be there. You, you can initialize it anywhere. It can be miles down the code. And it's, it's the same principle. Okay? Right. So, I think that's, that's enough for this one. I just wanted to show you data types and initializing them. Uh, the next video I'm going to do is on input and output. And that way you'll see more into initializing values and things. But at the moment, that's all you need to know. Okay, so just remember, put the put headers at the top. You don't have to, but it's nice. It keeps your code clean. Class is pretty much just the name of the file. Always keep the name of the file and the class name the same. The main function again, you don't need to really know any of this except for main. And remember, it's a small m. Don't put a capital M because it will not work. Then data types, int for whole numbers, float for decimal, double for bigger decimals, and char for characters. Now there's also with with int, I'm I'm not gonna try and confuse you with other ones, but there are more data types than this, but try and stick mainly to int, double, and char for the moment. We'll get into the other ones later. So data types, their explanations are there. And then finally, initializing. Just don't forget, variable names can't be the same, and semicolons at the end to finish it off. Okay? So, don't worry. If you don't get it for too much now, don't worry. You'll see more in the next input-output video, and hopefully that will clear things up a lot better. So, until the next times, practice hard.